Because can you please make me an employee first and foremost of your business? Can you pay? Well, don't make me make my trust an employee and pay my trust. What it monthly? What do you mean by that? Expand. Because there's levels, right? There's 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 the you could date a man that has resources and that's great. And also there's a level of if that man is really wealthy for real, make me an employee of your business. Write me off and pay me through a trust. What's up, guys? And welcome to another episode of It's Giving. I am your host, Sarah Fontenot. And if you have not yet, please hit that button below so you can get subscribed. Hit that little bell so you get a notification with each new piece of content. Now, for those of you that know, you know. For those of you that don't know, know that y'all have changed the way that we shoot this show. You guys have been submitting so many questions and so many video responses that we have curated this show according to what you're asking for. So, this is me, Anissa Kenny. We in the building over here answering what y'all sent to us. So we got Anissa on the mic. What's up, baby? Hey, Sarah. This is shot by Anissa, not with a gun, but with a camera. I okay. Mean, I can do both. Oh, my <clears throat> God. Well, I mean, I don't doubt that about you. I, just, I do not. <laughs> and we got Kenny over here, producer, creative director of the year. What's up? Who? What's up, everybody? It's your boy, who's Kenny V, is giving again and again and again. We just keep giving all the time. Let's go. In a world full of takers. Be Be a giver. giver. Yeah. You know, it's so crazy because that's really a lifestyle. But anyway, we're going to get it cut kicked off. So thank you guys for joining. Submit your questions. If you are live right now, feel free to put your questions in the question box. I think that would make it a little bit easier or just comment with your questions Mm -hmm. because that's great too. Yes. Without further ado, Anissa. We're going to start a little different this time. Okay. It's still from a question from the givers. The givers from the last like batch of questions. I love that for us. Okay. Somebody wants to know. Uh-huh. And this is the way to get a little bit more intimate with you, Sarah. Uh-uh. What's your worst dating story? Oh. Mm-hmm. My worst dating story? Yes, I want to hear it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I haven't had a lot of bad dates. What's the worst one? Honestly, I think like one of like the first time I ever kissed a boy. We're going all the way back there. Yeah, I have. I really haven't had a lot of bad dates, to be honest. Oh, actually, I take that back. Ooh, yes, there we are. See, this wasn't. This was. This was. This was an. It actually was a great date. I was out with my boyfriend at a comedy show in another state, and a woman walked up to me and she said, "Oh my God, you're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen." And let's say that we were in Wisconsin, even though we weren't in Wisconsin, but it was a state kind of like Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. And so we're in Wisconsin watching this comedy show, and the girl walks up to me. And she says, oh, my God, you're the most beautiful girl I've ever seen in my life. Just wow. And he said, what'd she say? And she said, I said, she's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. And she walked away. And he said, oh, she's probably never been out of Wisconsin. And I was like. And he blew like a troll, didn't he? He he probably looked like a troll. Ain't that crazy? I mean, he, 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 um, you know, in the, in, you know, it's, mm, yeah. We're going to keep it elevated. Today. Yeah, we are. But that, that, that was terrible. Outside of that. Um, when I was in grade eight, grade eight. I was, it was the summer before I went into grade nine. So, okay. Yeah. And, um, there was this guy that I like, I still remember his full name, first and last name. Oh and God. he was so handsome to me. We went to different schools, but I was like, wow, this guy's going to be my first kiss ever. And I was on a bunk bed on the top bunk. My girl and her guy were on the bottom bunk and another one of my girls and her guy were on the floor. And we were all kissing on the bed, not like together, but like our separate <laughs> little pods. And this man kept biting. It was the first time I ever kissed someone. And he kept like biting the sides of my, like his whole face was this way and my whole face was this way. So he kept biting me. And I was like, <laughs> it was terrible. It was probably three minutes, but it felt like an eternity. So that's horrible. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't a great experience. All right. That was a great little icebreaker question. Okay. I love that. Okay. Here's a good question. I love good questions. Should a man spend money or put an effort into thoughtfulness when dating? Both. Was the question either or? No. Oh. Oh, oh, no. It was or. Read it again. Should a man spend money or put an effort into thoughtfulness when dating? 
Should a man spend money or, or put, put thoughtfulness into dating? Mm-hmm. Put in both. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's an either or, but I think you go a lot further when you're thoughtful. Personally, for me, because I appreciate thoughtful gestures. Like anyone that's like, Sarah, let's go eat at this five star restaurant, which you're actually telling me is you want me to look like a child at a really nice restaurant because I'm going to order salad and french fries. <laughs> They're saying they can't hear me, Kenny. Can you hear me? Technical difficulties. I love that we know the same song. <laughs> Yo, Sarah's like my spirit animal. Awesome, real Truly. Stuff. Okay, can you guys hear her now? Test it out. What's testing, up, guys? Testing, Thanks for one, jumping two, on. What's up, Trev? Yeah, they said they can hear Yeah, us. grade eight. I'm from Canada. Yeah, that's what we say. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Period. they can hear me. Period. All right. Okay, here we go. Somebody asked, and I think I may have a be- uh, not a better perspective, but more of a perspective about this question than you. Mm. How to go about dating a woman with two kids? Dating? Yes. Um, privately. Don't involve the children at all. Okay. Dating dating is not the time where you introduce that person to your children. You get to know the person and see if it's worth it. I mean, as a man, I think it'd be incredible if you wanted to be helpful with the children. And what I mean by that is monetarily, let me let me bless you with a with a sitter while we go out. Or, or yeah, and now I don't think that's an expectation. Definitely okay, do not think that's an expectation. <laughs> Hell no, 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 no. But I think it's a really great gesture, right? Or I think about... Um, I think about if he's like, oh, you know, your kids, you want to take your kids to a movie. I think that's really beautiful. But as far as like actual having physical proximity to the children, I think that's wild. As a mother, no. That's wild. Now, okay. It's giving no. This is a me question asking you. Okay. This is a two-parter. Okay. Do you believe men that marry a woman that have children and become a stepdad to their children are weak? No. No. I've just I hear that a lot that men who marry single moms are simps and they're weak and I, I mean people have all types of colorful opinions. I don't necessarily agree, but you know this is podcast time, so we're no, asking. No, I don't feel like they're weak. Weak is such that's I think that's strong to take on somebody else's weight that you don't have to carry. Essentially, mm. you know, and and it's not right or wrong. It's not good or bad. It just is what it is. Kids are baggage. Good baggage, bad baggage, wild baggage. Don't matter. They can be either or. Yeah. They yeah. they baggage. So I think that you just have to choose a person that's okay with carrying that weight. And I think that that's strong. Mm. You know? I think it's a uh, a sense of like humility and strength to be able to see a child that you did not create. And, and love, love that child. Like yeah. they're your own. Yeah. I think that that's so special. Mm-hmm. I think that that is very, very, very special. And that, you know, despite our differences, I do... I am grateful to my ex-husband because he, when we got married, he took in my children as his own and he mm-hmm. loves Naomi as if he that is. His daughter. And I, and I, and even still after we have divorced, he still does that. Mm. Now our condition of our relationship don't got nothing to do with it, right. but I just love how he was strong enough to do that. And I it think takes that's a, beautiful. Yeah. A very unique person to do that on both ends. Yeah. All right. Oh Lord, these questions. <laughs> this is kind of childish. I don't know if I should read that one. Um, give me a good one, and you guys in the comments, give us good. Yeah, ones give too. us questions, guys. We want to know. Yes, women with children are a package deal for sure. Facts, but not at first. I don't think they're a package deal at first. Mm-hmm. I feel like you gotta, you've gotta really set a standard and a boundary and safety around those kids because I don't feel like it's responsible for a woman to be introducing men to, uh, or introducing her children to every man that she's dated for sure. All right, this is a good one. Okay. What is the minimum household income that would qualify you to be a wife? To be a wife? Yeah, what's the bare minimum that you will accept to be like, okay, you make enough money for me to be a stay-at-home oh, wife? Oh, for me to be? Or just, w- w- let's start with you and then like- Let's not gym. start with me. Okay. <laughs> let's, not, let's not even answer for me because uh, <laughs> I don't think that makes no sense. Um <laughs> Wait, so you have a, a ridiculous number? Is the number like outrageous? I for me to be a stay-at-home wife? Well, I don't think it's ridiculous because this is where all my friends are at. Hmm. All the men in my life are multimillionaires. So I don't 
your brain can't. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I can't relate. Anyway. But still, you didn't answer the question. The question for others, what is the minimum amount? Yo, it's hard out here. Mm-hmm. And I, I will tell you, you used to be able to go to McDonald's and feed your whole family for $20. You spend less. Right. Now it's $20 for one meal. Okay. <laughs> and, and and I feel inflation is real. Interest is high. I feel like, honestly, like when I first made $100,000 and that was over a decade ago, that didn't feel like no money. Mm. I felt broke. I was like, I still got more month than money. <laughs> you know, so, so and that's just being transparent, like really and truly. And I was single with no kids. So I'm trying to imagine, you know, after taxes, a hundred thousand is really like sixty eight seventy. Wait, what? After taxes, a hundred thousand dollars a year is oh, okay. sixty eight yeah, yeah, seventy thousand. Sure. So yeah, like a six figure, like a hundred thousand dollars a year isn't enough. I could tell you that right now, especially for if you, one if you, income in the house. Maybe I don't. if it's just you and her. So, um, Brandon says it depends on the lifestyle she's accustomed to. Yeah, and I also okay. think it depends on the average household rent or mortgage. Mm-hmm. Like, where do you live? Because if you live in L.A. You 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 aren't spending less than thirty five hundred dollars and not risking getting shot at. Wait, what? Happened? A month. Oh, I get it. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you mm-hmm. live in Atlanta, even Atlanta now is way more expensive. Expensive houses that used to be six and seven hundred thousand are two and three million. I remember back in the day when gas used to be ninety seven cents a gallon, and the prices for rent was like six hundred dollars a month, and we can walk down the street and be merry. And now that that's dead. I dead and gone. Everybody dead moved and gone. here and ruined everything. I hate it. I wish I would move back, except for you, Sarah. I love you. And Aww. you too, Kenny. Oh, <laughs> we can stay. Yeah, y'all can They'll stay. Everybody us. else, y'all just run. Oh, Lord. I can't stop touching my hair because it's short and I don't know what to do with it to make it. Okay. Thank you for saying that. Okay. I'm, I'm prepared. This person asked two great questions. Mm. So okay. I'm going to start with the first one. Okay. Is dealing with someone with past relationship traumas hard? Yes. Mm-hmm. Do you believe, this is my question, do you believe that a person has to be 100% healed before they can get in a relationship? I think they. I think that's the best. But I don't think, I, I think it depends on what you're healing from. Like if you're healing from a rape, Mm. You need to be, you should probably try to be 100% healed because what happens if you, you, people touch you and it makes you, you know, are, are, like, are you still triggered by it or, or what, whatever it could be. Mm-hmm. If you're healing from, um, um, a narcissist, a narcissist, mm-hmm. yes, you should take the time to heal. If you have an anxious attachment style, yes, or take the a, time to heal. Avoidant. Avoidant. Yeah. yeah. Depending on whatever your thing is. Yes. You should take the time to heal. But if it's like. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting my finances together because my business bombed and now I'm, I'm back at work. You could kind of date through that. But I think that things that are deeply rooted in traumas that really show up in the way that you, you deal with people and the way you deal with yourself, I think you really have to address those. At least then you can choose more powerfully because ultimately a secure healed person doesn't want someone that's not. This is true. So if you don't take the time to get healed, you really only have an option of other broken people. Mm. I don't want that. This is true. So you could do whatever you want to do. I just, I don't, I don't know that that's what I would subscribe to in my personal opinion. This is a great question. Okay. I love great questions. Coming from my sissy Kayla, because I've been sharing the lie. Oh, hey, sissy. Hey, friend. Um, She said, Sarah, what inspired you to start your journey and how did God surpass your expectations? My journey of what? Just becoming who you are, like your journey of podcaster, philanthropist, Mm. uh, lover of all things positive and Mm. transformative and growth. Like what made you be like, this is who I want to be and how did God exceed your expectations? Oh, man. God still exceeds my expectation, even when I don't deserve it. Mm. And I think that. What started my journey, honestly, it's not even super profound. What started my journey was I didn't want to be broke anymore. 
Mm. I didn't, I was so tired of getting three day notices to pay or quit every single month. I was tired. I literally got sued for $3,500 worth of late fees because out of the four years I lived in my apartment in Hollywood, California, I only paid my rent twice on time. Mm. So I feel like I didn't want that anymore. I would love to say that it got me started because, you know, I wanted to retire my mom. I wanted to spoil my family. I wanted to spoil my God babies. And all of that was true. But ultimately, like, can I just have my lights not off? You just wanted the car. Yeah. Like, can I, can I not light candles in the house because the lights are off and I can't afford to pay the bill? And I, and I push the, what's the thing where you call and you make a, um, a payment plan. I was tired of making payment plans for things I knew I couldn't afford on the day that they were due. I was tired. I was so tired. And so God blessed me inside of of knowing that we are not our circumstance or our situation. Mm -hmm. We are whoever we choose to be, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and we are all of God, right? So when you start thinking of those things, I really just feel like, ah. <laughs> Why did all of us... Okay, great. So they're going to be here today. Welcome to the show. Um, so anyway, I say all of that to say that um, ultimately the way that God has surpassed it is by never leaving me. Mm, never forsaking me. Never. He will never leave us. Never. And, I, 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 and I've experienced that. You know, I, like I live even now, the challenges that I'm going through now that create me to get frustrated or irritated or overwhelmed or any of the things. It's like, ah, but God. Yeah. So good. Do you ever find yourself, it, do you ever find it being hard to let go and let God sometimes? Yes. I'll be wanting to punch people in the face. <laughs> okay. I do. Can I just keep it real? Yes. People look and let me know in the comments, y'all. Have you guys ever in your life? Thank you, Tay. Have you guys ever in your life wanted to punch someone so bad, but you know, like number one, I ain't going to jail for you. And number two, I'm not about to hurt my hand for you. And number three, it really ain't worth it. Yeah, it's it's struggle. It's struggle. It's a struggle for me to Ooh. get to the it ain't worth it. Cause every time I want to put my hands on you, it's It'd worth it like, to me. It's, it's I have to think of my it. children. I Girl, I, you, I, 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 I don't even know what be keeping me grounded, to be honest. Your your unwillingness to go to jail. I ain't going to jail. Me, I don't care. Mm. Bail me out. I got nah, I, I, I ain't going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me a good one. Okay. Somebody asked in the live, oh, um, do you think a woman a woman's body count affects divorce rates? That's a great question. That's a great question. I mean, in the marriage or before it? Let's say in the marriage. Yeah. Let's say okay, okay, okay. Let's let's say a scenario. I'm going to give. I love giving scenarios. Let's say I'm dating somebody. Okay. Right. We don't have that discussion about body count. Right. And oh then we Lord. Get, I don't feel like it matters, but whatever. My body count ain't that high anyway. It ain't high at all. But anywho. <laughs> uh, you get into the marriage. We get, we get into the marriage. And then all of a sudden, the, the, he, the he finds out your body count. And, and the, now he wants to get a divorce. Yeah. Um, I think that's, that's whack trash. to me. Yeah, that's trash. Yeah, I just, that's, 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 that's weak to me. You were looking for an easy way out. That's what that sounds yeah, like to me. for sure. But I, I do, I, and we just had this conversation. I think that in order to be a high value woman, you can't be a promiscuous woman. And I don't care what anybody says. Actually, I, I don't, I think that high value means exclusivity and exclusivity means everyone can't get it. If anybody can get at you, that's not high value. Not to be confused with valuable, valuable. right? We because just had that conversation. literally, mm -hmm. like if you look at diamonds, all diamonds are valuable. But some of them have the highest mm -hmm. value, whereas other ones get crushed into little baby parts and are the fillers for other pieces of jewelry. Mm. All valuable, but high value is different from valuable, right? So um, I, I, I just think that, and especially if you're a high value feminine woman that wants a high value masculine man, you cannot be promiscuous. I'm sorry, body count matters. So, wait, what? Okay, wait a minute. You can't be promiscuous. Yeah. So. Okay, so so do you believe in a uh oh do you believe in a uh what's the word? A born again virgin, like a woman who um 
that was like a thought in her like say let's say she was a woman who lost her virginity at a young age and she kind of like lived her life like say in college she wilded out in mm-hmm. college mm-hmm. and she got she graduated wisened up and now her she lives a quiet life possibly moved to a different state nobody knows her and now she nobody knows so it's like she's this distinguished high value valuable woman okay D- does that make her less high value or make her does it does it eliminate her from being high value because she had a past like what if she was a hoe every six months like like your mama said my don't mama be a said hoe. don't be a hoe six months at a time, time. <laughs> yeah. my mama definitely says that um somebody said born again virgin just send the asteroid that's funny <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious um I, I honestly feel like if this was something that was done in your past and it never comes up and you never have the conversation mm-hmm. around body count, mm-hmm. then let it let it die. Like, you know, if you're if you're in your 40s and you had a wild time in college, mm-hmm. does that really matter? Probably not. Yeah. But if you are in your current age and you are promiscuous. Oh, yeah. I do not believe that a high value, high earning masculine man would choose you. He will make you one of his options too, just like you let everyone else make you an option. But being a promiscuous woman takes away from your value. I believe. I agree. I agree. Um, I believe, and my sister says the same thing. Um, we get so wrapped up in what men think of us, mm-hmm. like men as like the collective. Yeah. Besides thinking about what God says about us, mm. because we we all have a past, right? But if we've been redeemed and delivered under the blood of Christ. And we live to a certain standard. Our past doesn't matter. Why should I succumb my myself to what you think of me because of my past? And God doesn't even do that. Well, you know, though, I think that that has to do with heavy healing too, right? Because ultimately, do you have shame in the fact if you were a hoe in college and you haven't accepted it? Okay, like, and and now you try to hide from it. But if you're like, no, I did what I wanted to do, mm-hmm. and that's the thing too. I think that because so many people live outside of integrity with themselves, that it feels crazy. When, um, it feels crazy. Like it's, it's like, wait, what? When, 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 when you, you have to tell the truth about yourself because people are so locked in to the lies that they tell Mm. so locked into the facade that they project that it's like anything that gets close to their actual self is hurtful or now you're offended. Why are you offended? Cause he, cause he heard the truth. Yeah. Those be the a ones. A lot of people can't handle the truth. That's why a lot mm-hmm. of people get the truth stuck in set you free. It'll make you free. Yeah. Yeah. It's yes. crazy. And I just, I just, I feel like coming into a relationship, I do not care about your past as long as it's not jeopardizing my present or our future. Like if it's not, mm. if it's not going to jeopardize or keep me unsafe in any way, put me and my children in jeopardy. Who you are or who you were does not matter. I do my best to see people the way God sees people. I think it depends on what it is in the past. For me, I think men are are all hoes. Like yeah. they they should oh, they, they, they big hoes. They be out smashing, and that's I don't have no problem with that. But if it's like you know, depending what? on the 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 thing. I don't know. What thing? What are you talking about? Like if somebody did something crazy in their past, more so than body count, like mm. like murder. That's one part, but also, <laughs> but also, I don't know the murder that I really can. It, it, I mean, to be honest, right circumstance, right time, right, right opportunity. Could you date a stone cold killer? Like somebody who is mm-hmm. experienced. Why does he kill? Like he was trained, like military, special ops. He just like mm. man's man. Like I just feel like, what's the PTSD like? Mm. I got questions. <laughs> Before I can commit, I got questions. I, I got I got questions. Yep. Ooh. He was asking way too much about trying. To, it don't matter who she dating right now. We're not gonna answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> it's a secret. Right. It's a secret. Okay, so this is a good one. Mm-hmm. When a man calls you because you like because he likes you a lot, do you see that as a form of control? I see that as a form of lack and purpose. Yeah, because what do you? Why, why? Why you got all day to call me? Why were you talking all day? What we? What you? What you doing with your life? Right. You don't got no money. Send to me make? a text message. <laughs> you don't have no goals. What you working on? I. I honest to God, if a man can talk to me all day every day, I don't trust that man with my life because ultimately, relationships for the type of man that we talk about on this page means I'm trusting you to lead my life. 
But you could call me all day. What you be doing? Yeah. Clearly, I'm your life. I don't Unless like you're retired. Now, if you're mm. retired or you've already built your business, that's different. That's definitely different. So wait a minute. Back up. Let's backpedal. You were a data retired, man. Of course I would. Like, when, when you mean retired, we're talking about American categorized age of retirement. What age is that? I think that's like... That's for like nine to five or 65 and a half or whatever. You yeah. know. Okay. So what is your age, right? I, I know this answer. 45 to 55 is ideal. Okay. Okay. And I, have to, I have to say this mm-hmm. because statistically shown. Yeah. Every 10 years, uh-huh. men's penises work 10% less. Dang. So... <laughs> So is this a statistic? Truth? Yes, this, this is, is a fact. This is a statistic. A statistic truth. Like Damn. women, as we get older, we become more sexual beings. We get in our prime, while men decline sexually. Nah, I just don't think that. No, it's statistically. I've dated older men. Okay, maybe you just got the fine pickings of the batch, Sarah. But you I'm know, just saying. Yeah, I mean, you know, you. <laughs> <laughs> but for us normal folk over here, you know. uh <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my sissy said you can be young and retired. Yes, of course. But that's not what I meant. I'm saying like, I, because you said 45 to 55. That's ideal. That's ideal. Yeah. That's 10 to 20 years older than you. But he may not want that's, children. That's 10 to 20 years older than me. But what if he may not want children and you want to be a mom? I'll be a bonus mom. I'm sure he has kids. But so you are really content with whatever mother looks like for you. It doesn't yes. have to be what society says. It, it no, is. it doesn't have to be I birth somebody. If I'm a bonus mom, if we adopt a child, if we surrogate a child, if I, it, it doesn't matter to me. I do think that I'll have children in my, in my life that I have a, like, you know, a purpose with, mm-hmm. um, like a real, like a mother type purpose mm-hmm. with, but if it looks different for me, it just looks different for me. You may just be the rich, rich auntie forever. I love that for you. I'm currently, the you rich know, auntie. yeah. Kind of doing my thing with my babies. <laughs> I love you know. That. I got twelve nieces and nephews and two god babies. Well, okay. Well, let's go back to the to the to the intimacy, right? Of dating men that are okay. ten to twenty years older. Uh huh. So you've never had an issue with intimacy with a man's like not being able to perform, like having like like lacking an ED and anything like that. There was one man. I, oh, I, I can't even believe I'm about to say this out loud. He was my boyfriend. I'm going to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> Yes, we saved the juiciest stuff for the live. Let's do it. <laughs> oh my God. Um, Somebody said, man, let me pray right now. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Fix it. Jesus literally fix it. Somebody um, said they get tired too fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Why are we like this? <laughs> okay, so I would say. Um, <laughs> Just say the thing. There's one person that I was with, and he was very fast. A fast finish? Like a finisher? Yeah, and and I used to say, it's okay. You just have to get used to me. <laughs> you, just, you just have to get used to me. But he never got used to me. Oh, you got that Soul Snatcher 3000? <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> got that Venus flash. I don't know what it was, but I was like, oh, my Did he God. ever get used to you? No. Oh? So you've never, like... <sighs> it was just very fast. And to be fair, I like fast, but that was like... Whoa, fast. stop there. I do. Stop. Seven minutes. I'm great. What? You are tripping. Seven minutes. Seven That's minutes? All That's all a girl needs. Girl, you ch- speak for yourself. <laughs> you understand me? Speak for yourself right now. Okay? Mom and dad, I'm so sorry, okay? Wait, what? Say that again? I said, mom and dad, I'm so sorry. I'm just talking about seven, sex on the internet. It's seven fine. Seven minutes? That's ideal. Seven, okay, seven okay. to ten minutes to is ideal. I have to go there, Sarah. Oh my I'm God. so sorry. I don't know if I'm going to answer, but go ahead. Okay. I have to go there. So, like, when it comes down to the big O. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Wait. Wait. Because some women, they need multiple. I don't see how in seven minutes you can have multiple. I, I just maybe. Well, no. I'm going <laughs> to let me retract that. That's not true. <laughs> but <laughs> wait a minute. Because, you know. Uh, so, like, are you the girl that's like, as long as I get my one, I'm cool? Or are you like the girl that likes to, 
I want more. Because I'm the girl that's like, you better break my back in until I go to sleep and I can't walk afterwards. Yeah. I, need to, I just got to be honest with yeah, that. Yeah. No, I feel like it's a show. Wait, what? I feel like it's what? a show. It's, it's a show movie. for who? It's, it's like in my seven minutes, it's like a short film. You hit it. What the f- you know? <laughs> you, hit, you hit everything. And it's great. But what if he doesn't hit everything in seven minutes? For who? For you, no, Sarah. I'm good. Wait, so this is with foreplay included? Seven minutes? No, not no, that doesn't Okay, matter. so let's include all of the things, all the aspects of intimacy between a partner. Fifteen. <laughs> Yo, she is tripping me out. That is insane. That's insane. I I don't know why that's insane. We got stuff to do. Like, I, I feel like, look, I feel like, look, real talk, and it's going to sound crazy. And I haven't had this experience in a very long time, but I Same. feel like broke men Ooh. be the best in bed. That is, so, when when men need Why? a place to live? Because they auditioning. They, when they need a place to live. Don't They're they? auditioning. Oh my God. Let me tell you, they be the best. Now, I don't have that. I don't, I, those aren't the men I choose. <laughs> I choose the men where I'm going to have the best seven to 15 minutes honestly, of my life. Honestly, I feel like as a woman, if my man isn't keeling over after a good like 10, 15, uh-huh. something ain't right with me because like I'm not a super soaker like I thought I was. What's going on? Or his capacity is way high and... I don't know. We got to figure it out. But I just, like some people say, if he can last 30, 40 minutes, you got bad pussy. I've heard that. I mean, I kind of agree. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe we don't need no 30 minutes over here. 10 to 15. 7 to to 10, ideally, in the act. Somebody asked. thing, 15 minutes. Somebody asked how many times a day, how many times a week? Depends on your person. And it depends on your own sexual energy. And I think it depends on the week. Like sometimes there'll be weeks where it's like every day and that it's just one of those like, ooh, like type of weeks. And then another week, it might be three times yeah. in that week, yeah. you know? Now, multiple times in the day, morning, noon, and night, that's not me. You can't go for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with snacks in between? Who who has time? Broke people. Yeah, see, I'm not, I can't relate. To <laughs> mm-mm, no. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's 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 remove the topic of intimacy for right okay. now. Somebody asked, mm-hmm. Gemini the artist asked, "What's your advice for a woman who's the breadwinner, but her man makes her feel safe and secure in a relationship? He's Mister Right, but you want to encourage him to make more money." Damn, <laughs> <laughs> that's the complete opposite of our 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 audience. But what I will say is. You can't have it all. You got to choose the role that you want to play. Mm-hmm. And if you are the breadwinner in the relationship, maybe you can show him mm-hmm. how to create an ebook. Maybe you can show him how to, um, you know, maybe start vlogging on YouTube. I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what the thing is for him to make money because I don't know what he's great at. But encouraging him to just say, you know, but this is my question too. If the woman is saying. I'm the breadwinner in the relationship. Is she really okay with the role of what breadwinner means? Mm. Because ultimately the breadwinner usually is the provider. Mm -hmm. And if you are the provider, which means that that woman would be more in her masculine and he's more in his feminine, which is perfectly fine, by the way, because you should be seeking the opposite, right, Mm -hmm. Um, of yourself Mm -hmm. inside of feminine and masculinity. If you are... Um, that way, I really feel like you've really got to you 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 got to take the the the, the hand you were dealt. Mm. Dang, you know that's like it's like having a stay at home wife and then being like, oh, but babe, you need to make money on the side. What I didn't sign up for that? That's not right. Do you okay? So stay at home fathers. That's just that's for them over there, and I love that for them. I love that for them, but it ain't for me. That's not for me. <laughs> Somebody, that's not for me. All right. Somebody asked. Mm-hmm. Is good sex the same as love making? Depends. Whoa, whoa. Expand. Because sometimes love making is good. And sometimes I don't want to be vulgar. Don't be vulgar. Just and be sometimes vulgar. getting smashed by your person is better. And the opposite. 
Sometimes getting smashed is good. And sometimes lovemaking is better. So it just depends. Mm, it, I guess what you put your value in is what makes it either or. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's 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 time for all of it, though. I think all of it is important. Mm. You know? Wait. So getting smashed in your relationship and making you can do both? I'm so confused. What? Yeah. Getting Wait. smashed is like the rough, let me throw you on the wall, choke you out, move around, couch, table, bedroom. All you need is seven minutes. <laughs> Girl, this seven minutes thing is killing me. I can't. I can't. It's a long time. Okay. I mean, I'm not saying you can't get it done in seven minutes, but the way sometimes I just, man, I, okay. Let me, let me get, let me take myself out of it for a second. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Seven minutes is uh-huh. cool. Uh-huh. Everybody's like, seven minutes is enough if you know what you're doing. Okay. Seven <laughs> minutes is, is, that's what they say in these comments? Thank y'all. Okay. Thank <laughs> y'all. Uh, y'all gassing, Sarah. <laughs> do you believe in celibate? <clears throat> Absolutely. Back to you. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> Kayla asked, do you think it's uh, stay at home is my responsibility to hustle too? Not if not if you signed up for stay at home mom. I think you should have something that you're passionate in if you're a stay at home mom. But hustle means like grit, grind. Like the, when I think of the word hustle, yeah, I don't like that word. We hustling right now. No, I don't even think we hustling. You don't think so? No, I feel like hustling is like that's the beginning. You know? Oh yeah. When you like hustle and grind, mm. that's like you beginning. We're in the trenches. Ah, oh, that's what it we is. We definitely in the we working, but we aren't we aren't hustling and grinding anymore. So when I think of a stay at home mom, find something you're passionate about, see if people need it. Is it solving a problem and monetize on it? I think mm. that's a great thing to do because yeah. it's nice to have something of your own as mm. a stay at home mom. Because you don't always and also being a stay at home mom, being a mom, period, but especially being a stay at home mom is one of the hardest jobs ever. It is the you, hardest job. You don't get no time off. Absolutely not. It's 24 seven. At least people get the clock in and out of work. <laughs> you don't get the clock in and out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-uh. I feel like it should the, the option should definitely be there, but it shouldn't be a necessity. If you're asking me, especially if if you pursued me mm-hmm. and married me mm-hmm. and looked me in my eyes and said, you know what, baby, I just want you to be at home and be pretty and let me take care of you. I'll get your hair and nails done, do all the essential things. And you just have my babies and stay at home. And I'm going to be like, OK, well, you're going to make sure I, I don't ever have to worry about it. A thing Mm -hmm. ever again because can you please make me an employee first and foremost of your business can you pay well don't make me make my trust an employee and pay my trust what it monthly what do you mean by that expand because there's levels right there's 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 the you could date a man that has resources and that's great and also there's a level of if that man is really wealthy for real make me an employee of your business Write me off and pay me through a trust. Mm. A lot of people don't even know what that means, Sarah. Yeah. I feel like we that's a, just another thing that we can expand on we later. Could, we could create it. I really be trying to say the things that I know the, the most because of experience, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. What do I know? I ain't nobody. You, girl, bye. I just learned from the best. The best is my mother, by the way. But I also learned from a lot of other people, too. But I still think she trumps them. On how to be a lady, anyway. Somebody asked. Mm -hmm. How to get my woman fit and lose some weight to better her health. Since she's gained weight, the sex has declined. It's because she's tired. It's hard for our bodies to carry extra weight, to be honest. Like, just realistically speaking. Mm -hmm. She may be depressed. Yeah, she may be sad. She may be overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Um, I would get to the source of why did she gain the weight? Like, what's going on? Is it comfortability? Is it stress? Is it fear? Is it anxiety? Is it emotional eating? Is, Is it grief? You know, what is the reason for it? And then start addressing that. And then I also think there's something really powerful about 
maybe doing it together. Mm -hmm. Now, I do think that there are a lot of times where some couples don't want to go to the gym with their person because it makes them feel like icky. Um, But if she is a person, yeah, but if she is a person that likes to do things (laughs) together, you know, work out together. Yeah. Storm Leroy said maybe she likes to eat. (laughs) All right, Storm. Okay. (laughs) All right. All right, Storm. Uh, I... Okay, so I can only speak from my personal experience because I felt like I've gained weight this last six months of my life. Uh, but you know, weren't in a relationship. This is also true, but I can attest to the reason why. So I can maybe relate to like why it could be, like you said, grief, depression. Like I knew I've never stressed eight in my life. I've never been the mm. one to like just eat because I can. Mm. And I don't know, man, it's unresolved trauma and unresolved grief that hasn't been dealt with. And when, and it could, and the reason why they're not being dealt with is because they don't know the capacity they may have Mm. trying to work in a capitalistic society while also trying to heal. Like you cannot heal and work. They can't. It, they don't be simultaneous. Yeah. And, and I also think that people don't understand how much weight is also psychological. Mm. It is literally tied to your identity. And so I think that a lot of the times people will just be like, oh, that person's overeating. And it, it, they may not even be eating. Their body may be in such a stress response that it literally just soars the fat from whatever they do eat if they eat. And I think that mm. you've really, that's why I'm saying you got to get to the bottom of things. What is this face? I'm listening to you. Okay, but what's the face? <laughs> you, you ain't got a sugar coat. Man. Nah, man. Who said what? My sissy said just people just be eating people's crab legs when you had your own. Shake my head. No need to speak on it. It's a story. It's a hilarious. <sighs> a man that will motivate his wife if he loves her, he will teach her discipline, help her overcome it. Facts. Postpartum depression is real. Also, factors like if she's older, the metabolism slows down. Yeah, you know what? I gotta say honestly even for me and mm-hmm. my identity is very much inside of, like I have an aesthetic it's not a weight cuz you know I fluctuate 5 pounds I'm like 136 to 141 okay you feel me okay you getting heavy back you here. know you feel <laughs> me. okay um I'm anywhere in there and I feel like um as a 36 year old woman there's a look that I want there's mm-hmm. a way that I want to feel and mm-hmm. when I start to get like down here in my lower stomach that little like pudge I'm like <gasps> Yeah. Oh, you start walking on that treadmill a, for eight minutes on the annoying. incline of 15. It's annoying because it's like, to me, you're beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So, and, you. So, mm-hmm. you girl. Mm-hmm. and I just, um, I feel like as women, both of us are actually our little four musketeer group. We are all very hard on ourselves mm-hmm. and I just don't see what you see. I don't even think that we're hard on ourselves. I think we just have a standard. And when you start Mm. to fall short, it's like, get your stuff together, chick. Like, cut it out. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. It's definitely like that. Because, man, I, oof, you, you be on my behind. I be on everybody and myself. You do. I think I'm on myself more than any of y'all, though. Mm. To be fair. Somebody asked. You are extremely emotionally intelligent. Thank you. What would it take for a man to approach you? A friend that knows me. I'm by referral mostly. (laughs) What the? (laughs) What do you mean by that? (laughs) What? (laughs) Um, Thank you. Um, But, you know, you got to have somebody put in a good word because I just... (laughs) I was just, you know, I just, I be, you know. I that's be, so funny, a referral. Yeah, I think that's a really safe way to meet people. Do you think your exes will ever refer you? My exes? Some of them. Hmm. I really only have one ex that I fell out with. Really? Yeah, I haven't fallen out with any of my exes except for that person. Mm, okay. Yeah, and it's because they're delusional. <laughs> You know, like it is what it is. So, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. This is a good one. We've actually went through this experience not too long ago. Okay. How do you know when to cut off a friend? <sighs> when to is so tough. Um, when to cut off a friend? I would say you cut off a friend when 
there's no more alignment Mm. when core values aren't there. Mm. If there's high levels of betrayal, only you know when to cut off a friend. Mm. I had to cut off a friend not too long ago because of their actions and the truth came to light. And when the truth came to light, it was like, oh, okay. I love you, but I release you. Mm. Have a good cry. Well, let them go. Boy, boy, once I'm done crying, it's a wrap. I tell you that all the time. I'm going to cry about it. You know what's crazy? What? I've never cried over a man I've walked away from. Really? Not once. But you cried a lot while you were trying to let him go. Not really. Really? Mm-mm. Hmm. No. I've cried over girlfriends, though. Losing friends. Yeah. I feel like friendship breakups are worse. I do, too. Yeah. When you mm. lose a good friend, man, that's hurtful. It yeah. really is. Okay, this is a good one. Because this is definitely God's principles versus the world. Mm -hmm. Do you think it is wise to Mm -hmm. live with someone before you marry them? Why or why not? No, I don't. I think it's silly of a woman to move in with a man with no promise. You're not even engaged. Rewind that. You say this what? Silly Mm -hmm. of a woman to move in with a man if there's no promise. Like you aren't even engaged and we're moving in together. Mm -hmm. One of the things that my therapist said to me was, the difference between girlfriend and wife is ours versus yours and mine. Mm. So if we start merging the our things, like our car, our house, our dog, our kids, you're moving like you're married, but you're not. Yeah. So you mean to tell me you want me to uproot all of the stuff that I have going on with no promise? Mm. I'm not doing that. Mm. I would never. Mm. So you've never done it? In the past. I lived with a man. I No, I have. I'm my second fiance, I, we lived together. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and kind of my first fiance, kind of, but not really. But my second fiance lived together. My ex before my last, we, um, we didn't decide to live together, but he did come to stay with me for a year. Because stuff happened and stuff hit the fan. And that was just a whole different experience. But... Mm-hmm. No, I I don't I don't really believe in in moving in. So, what are your deal breakers when it comes to men? Arrogance, entitlement, um, lack of compassion, um, narcissistic personality disorder, <laughs> um, disrespect, lies, mm-hmm. deceit. Oh, I can't stand no sneaky, weak, deceitful man. Mm. I can't stand it. Oh my God. You want to share a story or something? What is going on? You sound no. like you just hit you in the core. When you mean by deceitful, can you give an example? Because sometimes people get manipulation and deceit confused. Well, let's look it up. How okay, sure. Let's look at it. Because you know me. I like to be, like to be and deceit definition. The action or practice of deceiving someone by concealing or misrepresenting the truth. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought it was. Mm. You've you've tried to make me think that it was something that it's not. You've tried to make me believe knowing or even not knowing. You're just not self-aware enough to understand that this isn't even what you actually want. Mm. And I feel like that is wild. People are going crazy. May God bless whoever that's for. Okay. Will you be with a man that doesn't make you want to submit to him on your own? No. Mm. You have to force submission. I don't even think that's a thing. Can no. I, is that a thing? I tried that in my last relationship. Didn't work well. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, I chose a person based off of rush, right? Like I was in a rush. And so when I was oh, in a man. rush, I chose a person that I knew I, I would never date. I used to literally say, I would never date this person. I would never date this person. Then I ended up I dating that person. About. I mean, it don't really matter, but that happened. And so when I dated that person and I started observing that person, it's like, okay, great. You make money, but your character ain't right. Oh, okay. You make money, but X, Y, Z. And it it became all of these, all of these things that just added up to a deceitful man. Mm. I don't like that. Be a man. You know what I mean? Tell the truth. Shame the devil. A lot of people have a problem with the truth. Man. You have so many questions. Yeah, it's not what, great. What's our time, Kenny? Because we we be on one. Yeah, we have to do two minutes. 
Okay, we're gonna a- we're gonna ask like t- answer like two more questions. Okay, and then do a response. How do you know? This is a really good question. How do you know when a man is in spirit and not led by his flesh? That's a really good question. Observation and experience with that person. I feel like I feel like, especially like for dating. I'm assuming mm-hmm. if a man is trying to bed you immediately, he's in his flesh. If a man will not be patient to wait for you, he's in his flesh. If a man is not okay with getting to know you before he wants to lay down with you, he's in his flesh. So it's observation and time. Mm. Time reveals all and only God knows. What I know is the vetting process is one of the most important processes out here, in my personal opinion. Mm. This 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 is a question that I'm having for you. Okay. I have for you. Okay. Do high value men and women ghost people? Yes. Wait, what? Excuse me? Yeah. They do? You cut off access to what's not serving you. But without any regard to the person's feelings at all? I mean, you could say, I am I feel complete. But that's not ghosting. Ghosting is you just disappear. Oh, okay. I'm a ghost. I'm a ghost. No, I'm a I don't feel like that's a high value move. I actually feel like that's a weak move. Mm. Yeah. Like coming to somebody like, hey, this is ran this course. I'm good. And then you out. That's yeah, not like ghosting. I feel complete. Okay. Somebody asked, Mm -hmm. how would you respond, if at all, to your partner that that goes completely MIA ghost you? He stated that he's just too busy being a full-time single dad, juggling work and our relationship. I don't think that's ghosting because he stated that he's too busy being a single dad, having work and a relationship. That's letting you know that I'm complete. Somebody tried to tell me that I ghosted them when I literally said, um... I literally said, you are an amazing person and I don't have capacity for what you're asking for. I just don't. Mm. But I, 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 I think you're great. And if things change in the future, who knows? Let's see where things go. But I wish you well. Then they hit me back not too long, like maybe the next day. I was like, oh, so you're just ghosting me? I'm sorry. I didn't ghost you. I actually very directly communicated that this is no longer serving me mm. or you. Because ultimately, you want something from me that I can't give to you. Yeah. So I'm not ghosting. I think you just want to blame and point fingers. So we just have to be mindful of of what it is that's actually happening. Yeah. I feel like people just have a hard time accepting reality sometimes. Yeah. And they just want to. They build those fake visions in their mind. Yeah. It's delusion, really. Yeah. The Lulu is the Salulu. Till it's true, true. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, okay. This is a good one. Okay. Ah, y'all coming in the comments with these questions and they're really, really good, y'all. Um, Communicating is the responsible thing to do. You were correct. All right. How many chances do you give someone who's continuously failed to show up before accident? For the same thing or period? Let's say both. If it's for the same thing, you got about three chances. Because mm. I'm going I'm to I'm correct you. No, the first, no, you probably have about five. First time I'm going to observe. Second time, I'm going to, I'm going to correct you. Third time, is there growth? If there's no growth, I'm done. Mm. If there's a little bit of growth, but you're still doing it. Okay. Fourth time, still growth. Okay. You can hang. But if there's just starts to just default back, no, you're not for me. Mm. Now, if it's a new problem every time, but they're not doing the past problem, that's human. Mm. we all make mistakes we have to adjust Mm -hmm. yeah especially if we're doing something out of our norm yeah aaron said i feel complete sounds like what a mosquito says when they get off your arm (laughs) 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 and true (laughs) last question yeah before we go to the response video okay how do you know the difference between being in love and being in lust when you're dating Mm. That's a good question. That's a really good question. Let's hear it. I know the difference, but I want to hear your answer. How do you know the difference between being in love or being in lust? Mm-hmm. I think that's very similar to being in, in spirit or being in flesh. I think that 
if you just are in lust with someone, it's all about the experience, the experience, the experience. How can you show me? What are you going to do for me? What can I do for you? How can we make it sexy and attractive and fun? When you're in love with someone, that's more like I care about who you are and how you are and what you have going on. And I want to love on you. And I want to, even if we, if we never have sex, I want to do all the things with and for you. I feel like that's much more of a deep rooted groundedness. Sense of being. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whereas the other is like, it's, it's frothy. It's fun. It's quick. It's fast. It's going to fade away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't, I don't. So I feel like that's how I would say the difference. But I think that's very similar to the question of spirit and flesh. flesh. Yeah. Man, somebody asked one good question. Mm-hmm. Can you date a man that's outside of your religious beliefs? Like if you're a Christian, could you date a Muslim? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, like he prays in the morning at 5 a.m. on the carpet? <laughs> yes, Sarah. Like five times a day. They he prays pray over his food like this? Yeah, they don't pray over their food like yes, that they all do. the time. Not all the time. Yes, they do. Okay. Well, okay. One of my closest friends is Muslim. I've never seen him do that. He ain't that Muslim, though. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Just <laughs> like, 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 does he believe in having multiple wives? Yes. Oh, see, mm, that's why he might have thrown me off. Because we talked about this, you can't be like, which means poly, right? If you have multiple wives, but technically poly isn't even legal in America. So is it really poly? But that's a question for another day. But technically you'd be poly, which means he's taking care of everybody. Is he taking care of everybody? I don't know. If he's Muslim (laughs) and I don't, I don't know. I think I have questions. (laughs) I I do. I think I have questions. I got a, I got a lot. I'm not. I'm not not praying on no carpet. (laughs) Oh then you're not God. that Muslim, Aaron. Right. It, it, look, okay. All right. I feel like how where, where, where were we at on time, Kenny? Okay. Now we gotta listen, guys. We have to turn the turn the direction. We gotta pivot. Okay. They ask, they keep coming with these questions, y'all. Okay. I love this. This God is Allah. I listen. What's what's the what's the question we had this morning? I forgot to ask you that question. What do you bring to the table? (laughs) What do you bring to the table, Sarah? I love this question. The internet's going to come for you. I'm waiting for it. Well, because everyone thinks I have all the answers, right? Right. Number one, I don't. That's true. (laughs) But if someone were to really, if a man were to really say to me, Sarah, what do you bring to the table? I would say the ability to see what the table needs and then bring that. Because if everyone's bringing turkeys, but we're all vegetarians, or if everyone is bringing cutlery, then there's no food. Or if everyone is bringing napkins and, and, wine, but there's no bread, we're all going to be drunks, we're all going to be starving, or we're all going to be dead, right? So my ability, I think my one of my strongest abilities inside of what I bring to the table is I'm constantly seeking what, what needs to be, need. yeah, what does the table need? Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to go get it and make it, or I'm going to say, you know what, this table actually isn't for me. Mm. I love this for y'all. This is great, but I'm going to exit stage left. So thank you. You know how humble you have to be to say something like that? Well, you know what? It takes a lot of self-awareness to be able to assess a table Mm. and see what it needs. I've never, you know, I've never like heard it that way because Mm -hmm. uh, like naturally or subconsciously when women are asked that, I've never been asked that question before ever, Mm. by the way. If what do you bring to the table? We automatically think. We bring our wombs. We bring peace and kind of, and, and I like, make this much money, and I, yeah. I this that. The For truth, one, yeah, money. Men don't care about how much money you make. Well, not only that, but how arrogant to think that the things that you bring to the table is what every person needs. 
Mm. We're all different. And we're not for everybody. Yeah. So mm-hmm. if 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 you need to have peace and you need to have someone to speak life into you and you need a woman that will cook for you two days a week and make your smoothie seven days a more, I can do that. Mm-hmm. But if what you need is someone to be a, a drive the driver in a bank robbery and what you need is for someone to um you know, allow for you to disrespect her or what you need is someone that's going to let you get away with low amounts of accountability, then you don't want a me because I'm going to make you feel crazy. Mm. And the truth is high value okay. high is value. subjective to whoever sees it mm. because some people may see Jordans and be like, I need every single pair. And John, another I've one never is like, owned a pair of Jordans. you've never, I have several, but yeah. I only buy the ones that I like. Yeah. You know? So it's like, it's like, what, what do you actually need? Mm. And I think that is the part that people are missing. I bring a lot to any table that I'm at. Hello. But the, the, the most beautiful thing that I bring is the ability to identify what do you need mm. and then to serve it to you. I am a personal witness to this, y'all. She's awesome sauce. Thank you. I love Sarah. You know what I love? I love I love in the Bible Esther. Mm. You know, when when he asked her, What can I do for you? You can have anything, even if it's my whole kingdom. And she says, Let me throw you a banquet. Third time is when she finally asked for something. Free my people. Mm-hmm. But that was after the fact that she fasted and prayed with her people for yes. like three days with no food and water. Yes. But even more than that, he asked her three times, what do you want? You can have anything, even if it's my kingdom. God. And she said, let me throw you a banquet. Mm. You know, I feel like that that's what I bring to the table. The ability to be patient enough. For you to enjoy, to identify your needs, to see what's necessary. Mm-hmm. Let me throw you a banquet. But hey, we're also going to free my people. Yeah, for sure. You know? I rub your back, you rub mine. I love that. Somebody's asking where can they find their ebook. Oh! Um, oh, Kayla's asking, Sissy, we got you, girl. Hey, it's the link in our bio. First link in the bio. How to be 10 steps on how to be a high value feminine woman. Yes. Is. Intro to finding your femininity. Yeah. com. You can find it there too. You can also submit your questions and your videos there too for the, anyone that's new to this. Yeah. If y'all want to sub- submit like video questions and want us to respond to them, you can definitely drop them on our website for sure. Yes. Is and it time for us to do our final video? What were you about to say? Somebody inserted that Esther dressed in a way that was pleasing to the king, too. That's what I'm saying. Has Stretch. to be. It has to be pleasing to the eye. Men are visual. <gasps> what you do? What did you do? <gasps> what are you looking at? What's going <gasps> on? What? What are you doing? <gasps> <gasps> Sarah is so dramatic, y'all. What is, what is, that? What is happening? I don't know what's happening. Do you know what's happening? What's happening? Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to videos. Let me go to videos. Go to um the third one. Yeah, where it says the 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 Nick Cannon thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I told with my abandonment because you are in your dysfunctional norm that you've become comfortable but with. But it's work. It's become a superpower. But you've learned to survive in it. You're not yeah. thriving in that. There's not a thrive. That's not thriving. There is no cape. There is no superpower. There's no superpower in a I lack of mental that. health. And there's no superpower. But it's worked for me. Like you said, I mean, you you you, you know why you read me well. You know like, why it worked I, for you. With <laughs> all due respect, seriously, to all the women that you've encountered, ladies, I'm saying this. The reason why it's worked for you is because you have chosen Listen. and to prey on low functioning women who don't have the emotional intelligence. No, I'm Ooh. going there. Who will allow you to do that, Nick? I disagree. Yes. Uh, oh, this no. is why I disagree. I mean, one because I well, dealt with the high value women that I wait, but I, I didn't say high value. But okay, I'm just I'm giving compliments. The low we are, functioning woman will allow you to function low with them, Nick. You could not function but, uh, that low. So you everyone's could not low function, functioning at baby, some point in their you life. You could not function low with the woman of my functioning. Yep, I did it. We went there. 
We love you, Nick. <laughs> we we love you, Nick. We really do. Um, and also, I I mean, I I uh, I agree in this not with her saying that about Nick Cannon, but I do feel like there is a level of praying that happens, and I don't mean P R A Y, I mean P R E Y that happens when um with successful men they get to choose really beautiful women that are less you know, maybe you could say low value, low functioning, however you want to say it, those types of women, because they don't hold you at any level of accountability. And that's what I was saying. That's when you have to know if this table is for you or not. Mm. Right? Like I'm not, I'm not ready to to bring anything to a table to a man that I have to walk on eggshells around. Mm -hmm. I'm not bringing anything to the table for a man that isn't okay taking accountability or having strong leadership. Mm. You know, so um, I'm also not okay being at a table with a man that is weak because I can't trust you. A weak man is a dangerous man. Ooh. So I, I I just so strongly feel like it's important for us to, um, you know, be, be, be mindful, just being mindful. Mm. I agree with the video. I feel like men who deliberately pray p r e y on low it's deliberate though but back to you i think it is deliberate mm -hmm. i think it's a way to rejuvenate oneself because they can't have the capacity or hold the capacity to deal with somebody high functioning i think it's and they they suffer from low body syndrome so they have to get someone that is low functioning to be able to cope and give some level of ego pride and sense of self so mm -hmm. they prey on low vibrational women because like you said they don't have boundaries and they will accept almost anything mm -hmm. i i don't think the only reason i agree with everything you said except for the word deliberate i think most of these minutes now subconscious because it mm. is childhood traumas that have been moving on autopilot in their life their entire life and that's just what it is it's a part of who they are it's become a part of their personality but mm -hmm. i don't think that they're intentionally like let me go find a girl that hates herself and has no boundaries <laughs> so that i can treat her bad i don't think that that's the come from mm -hmm. i think the come from is i'm gonna do what i want to do and be how i want to be and I know even though this girl is dropped dead gorgeous, she'll put up with it because she don't have no boundaries because she didn't grow up with a dad because she didn't grow up with a, a mother that says that she loves her because she didn't grow up with someone that says um, you can because she didn't grow up with. So you're you're choosing these women that that don't come from the strongest background, nor do they come from the most current experience in their strength of self inside of setting boundaries inside of knowing who they are. So mm -hmm. they're easy to take advantage of. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it's so much about um, them wanting to destroy women as much as I think that it's just you really need to do some therapy and deal with your trauma. Yeah, but a lot of black men don't believe in therapy and that's sad. I know, it's so sad. Black men go to therapy so for the love of God. Go to therapy. Somebody said Nick impregnated women. He wouldn't raise his daughters to be like, my God, that's insane. I didn't say it, Nick. Uh, Revelant underscore where did listen? <laughs> I didn't say it. Golly, go to the last video, the 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 very last one. This is that that was that that was that was something. That was a bar. I would never say that out loud, but <laughs> is she right about feminism? Hmm. Feminism has definitely ruined all of that where it comes to men being men, men step up. There was, I don't know if you guys saw that article that there was uh, some girl that was drowning and the guy saved her life and then he was like, she was going to sue him for touching her. Oh, he, he touched me without my consent. Bitch, you were under the water, you were dying. Like he literally saved your life. And she's like, well, for a brief moment, I was grateful that I was alive. This is why men don't step up because when they do the right thing, Search they get crucified. Story. If you want better men, be better women because it starts with you, how you act how you carry yourself how you talk to them treat a man like a king he'll treat you like a queen Feminism. i agree you agree yeah yeah i do i i think that um damn. i think that um yeah i agree treat a treat a treat a yes i agree
If you treat a man like a king, he will treat you like a queen. But unless, I was just about to say, unless he's just a dirtbag dude, and then he's going to be a dirtbag dude because he don't know how to treat you like a queen. So that goes back to partner choice as well. Um, but I do think that women are making it very hard to step up because there is no standard. It's like, yeah, we can sleep together on the first night. I'm going to give you my most valuable asset because you bought me dinner tonight. Girl, what in the world? <laughs> and it's literally like, no. But uh, okay, a lot of women have become very masculine. So in their minds, they just want to smash just as much as the dude does. A lot of times the men be more. Go ahead and decrease your value. <laughs> Go ahead and do it. If that's what you want to do. Be grown. Be big grown. Just know what you're signing up for. If you are a promiscuous woman, you are you are you are disqualifying yourself from the best of the best. Because the best of the best, I do not care what any man and men might say. We don't care about a body count. You They're may not lying. be the men I'm talking about, or it's a lie. Mm. It's 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 a current body count. If she's going out every weekend right now and getting smashed by one or two dudes a week, you you care. I'm sorry. You, you should care. Yeah, for sure. In my opinion. So I don't know. I'm I'm just saying it. it's impossible to be high value and um not and, and promiscuous. And a thought. You can't be a thought and a high value. That's why when it comes to I'm sorry. I mean you can be for the night. Maybe two. What? High value man will still smash a thought. What are we talking about? No, no, I was about to go into what we talked about earlier this week and we not we're gonna wait. Oh, because that's, that's gonna come. Yeah. yeah. That's gonna come. Yeah. Okay. Women have to understand they can never, ever smash a man. They can only allow men to smash them. We enter the woman, the woman doesn't. That's not what I mean. I'm just saying they have the outrageous desire to equally want to be intimate or have sex as much as the man does. Like I've been, in, I've not, I've been in situations, Lord Jesus. Get a man. toy or get a friend. What? Get a toy or get a friend. It's too much. It's too much. Get one person. Have your little boo thing. Have your little friend on the side. That's okay. But you to just, so? I mean, I think I think that's much better than getting smashed every weekend by somebody new. That's crazy. Yeah. That is crazy. If you sleep with one person, don't be a hoe six months at a time. My mom was talking about dating one person at a time. One person for six months. That's two men a year. That's a lot. Yeah. That, yeah. Like, that's really a lot. Yeah, that is a lot. You know, so... I don't know. Maybe I'm a crazy. Maybe I'm not. Feel complete? I feel complete. All right, y'all. We'll episode. be back on a live at five o'clock. We're back live at five o'clock. We're back live at five. Yeah. Yay. We're back live at five p.m. Y'all join us. Oh, yes. Yeah, so join us at five o'clock. Anissa, thank you. You freaking killed it. Shot by Anissa. Check her out. Follow her on the gram, y'all. How you feeling? I feel amazing i love amazing yes and we got who is kenny v on the switchboard what's up what's up who shout out to the givers again make sure to go to the website and get the book yes. It's available right now subscribe like share do all the fun things that we need so we can keep growing let's go sarah do you think we can put in another question box for our five o'clock live episode like any questions people want to ask for our uh our live at five what, like like put it in one. the story N yeah put it in the story yeah. And make an announcement like, so everybody can know we're live at five. We live at five. I like that. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I love it. All right, guys. Well, that has been another episode of It's Giving. If you are live, we love you so much. If you are watching this when it actually drops, we love you too. If no one has told you today, you are freaking phenomenal. Bomb.com. Nothing can stop you but you. Kenny already said it. Make sure to get subscribed. Share, share, share. Also, if you want to get the book, first link in the bio, or you can go to www.mizsarafontenot.com and all of the resources are there, different things that are upcoming, all of the things. But we love you. We love you. We love you. And until next time, bye. bye.